we are in a love awakening a grace awakening joy awakening peace awakening a true god awakening and the world is beginning to awaken not necessarily the church but the world and those who are within the church open to pursue something deep inside that's calling them wooing them to embrace it so i encourage everyone to embrace these awakenings uh, don't hold back um building on the foundation of unconditional love in this new series i'm going to share the journey that led to my restoration of my first love relationship with the father that enabled me to discover my own identity as a son of god and i will reiterate this point that i made last time because there have been a number of comments that i've seen online um, about people struggle to be called a son or a bride and a wife depending on your gender there is no gender attached to the term son, daughter, male, female, bride, wife, husband within what I'm sharing within a natural setting. Of course, there is. But in terms of God and how God views us, we're all sons uh, from the perspective that God sees it. Now, of course, we may be a female or male from a natural perspective, but that shouldn't stop us embracing what actually sonship means, um, what being a wife or a bride or any of those things mean um, we should not be offended or feel awkward at being described as a bride wife or son um, we're all children of god regardless of our physical gender and our identity is in our origin in god and we discover that in first love sonship is an issue of identity in relationship and positional governmental authority in co-heirship with jesus the son of god that's why I use the word sonship um, and I don't differentiate between sons and daughters because it's a position that we have in co-heirship with Jesus. And that is really all there is to it. There should really be no need to, to have a problem with being called a son or if you're a female or being called a bride or a wife if you're a male because it's not relating to gender at all. Um, since we last met, I've found a number of online quotes that I want to throw out there for you. Um, uh, this is a couple by uh, Don Keithley, who is the Grace Awakening Network sort of coordinator. Um, not one single person on the planet is in Adam. If you're in Adam, then Jesus was not the last Adam. You know, we are new creations in Jesus. We need our minds renewed to that fact because it is a fact, but we may not come into that realization yet another one jesus did not come to punch your ticket for heaven one day jesus came to give you the doorway into full union with the father through the son now today in this world and i think that full union is really what i'm looking um, for us to discover in restoring first love restoring that place of union which is the place of first love that is our origin that reveals the union we had in the beginning and i think that's the key we had that in the beginning and god wants to restore us back to where we once were and will be again uh this quote is by luke Agee. revelations are actually memories from your spirit that you forgot you knew entering from your heart into your soul and mind so again, discovering our origin in first love can restore those memories. You know, I had many experiences where I remembered and began to engage who I was before I was here and what I was doing before I was here. And that helped me outwork my full identity in this realm. Mike Parsons' new teaching series, Restoring First Love, is only available from our website, eg.freedemark.org slash first dash love titus 1 2 uh, in the mirror bible it says this is the life of the ages which was anticipated for generations so in other words all prophetic expectation was looking forward to where we are now the life of our original design announced by the infallible resolve of god before time and space existed so God, even before anything came into existence, had already had our original design within his heart and 
mankind's union with God is the original thought that inspired creation. And I, I really like that quote. Mankind's union with God is the original thought that inspired creation. And his desire for union and relationship with us was why he created everything in the first place to establish a place where that relationship could outwork. Galatians 2, 20, again in the Mirror Bible. So here I am dead and alive at the same time. I'm dead to the old me. I was trying to be, and that's really a key there. I was trying to be something and trying to be someone through my own efforts that was never going to succeed. Um, it says, I'm dead to the old me. I was trying to be and alive to the real me, which is Christ in me. There was always this sense of union that God desired. Co-crucified now, co-alive. What a glorious entanglement. And again, I love that. And a glorious entanglement. You could think of that from a, a, a quantum physics perspective in terms of quantum entanglement. But you could also think of it as relational and interactive and interconnected and in a union with him. I was in him in his death. Now he is in me, in my life. For the first time, I'm free to be me in my skin, immersed in his faith, in our joint sonship. He loves me and believes in me. He is God's gift to me. And that is, a, again, a wonderful statement in our joint sonship. And that is what sonship is, in our joint sonship. And that is how the Bible describes it, because it's a positional relationship Nothing to do with male and female there. Now, in the Passion Translation, Galatians 2.20, my old identity has been co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine, for the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as one. Again, the concept of living in this union of relationship. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God, who loves me so much that he gave himself for me, dispensing his life into mine. And again, that's what we're looking to discover and, and experience him in us, the hope of glory in, in us, a revelation that has been poured into our hearts through the spirit of God's present in me, what Jesus was describing would happen after the resurrection, that we would know that he's in us and we are in this relationship with him in the Father. And he's dispensing that. That is flowing through me, into me, through me and around me all the time if I can cooperate with what he's doing and come into agreement with it in the union of our hearts and minds and beings. So this is a quote from about that scripture that I found. We live in union with the divine one, Jesus Christ, as my new life is empowered by the faith of the son of God. Now, see the faith of the son of God, not in. See, if we have if it's all to do with our faith in the son of God, then it's to do with our faith. And it very clearly says we're saved by grace through faith. And that is not our own. It's a gift that's been given. So it's his faith that I'm living in, who loves me so much that he gave himself for me and dispenses his life into mine. Our new nature is now a divine union. That is the reality. It's a new divine nature. We really must become awakened to live from this reality. Jesus is resetting us from unbelief to knowing with a certainty so we can believe and experience everything Jesus says as a matter of fact. May our entire internal world realign to this truth. Settle to this truth with an absolute knowing, complete certainty and trust in Jesus is every word that he says. And not just what he says, but who he is in us as the living word of God, because Jesus is the word that became flesh. Jesus was the word and the word was with God in the beginning. And that is our origin within that living word. So we can live from the strength of our union. He lives in me. We live from that place, a place of restoration, being a new creation 
him in me and me in him. We live within I am, that I am in a perichoresis love relationship. And I'll go into that a little bit more. So what do you think that looks like? What would it mean for you? And the quote from uh, a lady called Angela Mikio Paris is, I ponder on this verse often. And I think it's worth pondering on. It's worth meditating on. What is it like to be in union? What is it like to be a new creation reality? And I believe many people are awakening to the possibility of this union. It is a now message that God is releasing for us to discover. Another quote, the absence of your full identity, your full potential leaves a hole in this world. Now think about that. The absence of your full identity, your full potential leaves a hole in this world because this world needs you. You are created for this time, for this purpose within relationship with God for creation. Don't settle for good enough or feeling better. You're incredible, regardless of what you believe. Your true self, your full identity is so powerful and so needed right now. Go through the difficulty, dark night of the soul, deconstruction, etc. And don't hold back. Welcome it, embrace it and accelerate it. This world needs you, the full you. Yes, I'm talking to you. And that was Martin Smith. Now, the key in this is to be willing to embrace going through whatever it takes to bring us to that reality of who we fully are. That means a whole deconstruction of our thinking, maybe our belief systems, maybe what we feel about ourselves. But if we welcome it and embrace it, it can accelerate. If we resist it, it can obviously take longer. So I encourage everyone, don't hold back. Wholeheartedly allow God to take you on the journey that will bring you into your full identity because you are truly needed. I'm going to leave it there, um, but we're going to go into an activation. What God wants is us to experience rest, to come to that place where we abandon our soul into the trust of God who loves us unconditionally. So I encourage us to close your eyes. Begin to think about living loved, that right now God loves you. Right now, his love is surrounding you. Begin to come to that place of meditation, to that place of rest. Start breathing slowly, more deeply, more focused, so you can breathe in and breathe out the unconditional love of the Father. You're breathing it in. You're taking it internally. It's flowing in you. Feel that unconditional love flow through your being. So just become still. And I would encourage you, whether you've done this a thousand times, whether you've never done it before, picture a door, picture the door of first love within your spirit. If you struggle to picture or think of a door, think of one which you know really well, your front door, a door you're familiar with, just begin to imagine that door, picture it. You may feel it, you may sense it, you may just have that sense of knowing, or you might be able to see the door in your mind's eye, in your the eyes of your heart, your imagination. So picture that door. And by your choice, you can open the door. Jesus is knocking. Jesus is speaking to you, asking you to open that door. He's given you the invitation. If you open that door, he is going to come and you're going to experience his presence. 
So I encourage you, just reach out in your imagination by choice and open the door. Make that choice to open the door, open it wide, and just welcome the presence of Father, Son, and Spirit. Welcome the family of God that they might surround you, that you might be in their very midst as they embrace you, hug you, entwine with you, come into a union, a deeper relationship. Stay in that embrace. Stay in that place of intimacy. The Father, Jesus, they may speak to you. They may whisper into your ear. They may woo you. They may begin to say, Lakar, I want you to be my very own. Stay in that place of rest, that place of intimacy. in the embrace of love I believe that God would want to speak to you call you deeper open your heart open your spiritual ears to listen let your spirit and soul engage with these words from the Father Son, I call your spirit to attention. Son, listen. Listen to the words of my heart. I call you to step out of independence and sink into the ocean of love and joy and peace. I call forth your true identity as a son, as a co-heir, I call you to return to your true origin within my heart. I call you to enter into my rest. I call you to come deeper into intimacy. I call you to lie down in an oasis of peace by the quiet brook of bliss. I call forth your sonship identity, position and authority. I call forth your destiny to manifest God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. I call forth your destiny to fill the earth with my glory. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you unconditionally. Rest in my love, rest in my joy, rest in my peace. I love you, I love you. I love you.
you can stay in that place of rest as long as you want. Let it be your abiding dwelling place. Let it be a constant in your life. Don't rush. Don't feel you have to come out of that place. Stay there if you'd like. Just stay there. <laughs>